I'm Britt from Slam and Spines and welcome to my video. I need to give a little bit of context for this video. So, I am currently in grad school uh, for a master's in library and information science or library school, which is a simpler way of saying all that. And Recently, I just did my final project for a class I was taking called Information Sources and Reference Services. And in that class, our final project was to create a pathfinder on a specific subject from the perspective of a specific real library. And you may be wondering, what the heck is a pathfinder? So I will be enlightening you about what a pathfinder is. I will be talking a little bit about what I did for this project and then I will be sharing all of my resources that I curated for my project which is on the topic of comics. So first of all, what is a pathfinder? So I'm pulling this definition from Old Dominion University's LibGuide and this site states, According to the Dictionary for Library and Information Science, a pathfinder is a subject bibliography designed to lead the user through the process of researching a specific topic or any topic in a given field or discipline, usually in a systematic, step-by-step -step way, making use of the best finding tools the library has to offer. So essentially, a pathfinder is a generic term for a guide and it could be on pretty much any topic that the creator desires to enlighten the reader or viewer on. Um, it can be printed on a piece of paper and given as a handout. It can be listed as a web page on a library website. It can be a video even, um, and it can curate a multimedia list of resources including videos, books, websites, um, it could also walk you through a step-by-step -step process, for example, such as how to research a paper or how to check if your sources are credible, or it could be on like a topic such as caring for senior dogs or living a more environmentally friendly lifestyle. So a pathfinder can be pretty much about anything and be in nearly any format, but the main criteria of a strong pathfinder is that there is not so many resources as to overwhelm the viewer. I mean, you really want it to be a finely tuned, very strong, the best of the best list of resources. For example, if you know of three websites that cover the same topic, you're only going to want to recommend the best of those three resources or if you do recommend all three, you're going to have to give like a pretty solid justification for why they all deserve to be on the roster, like if they offer different things from one another. And you also want the resources to be credible and trustworthy and quality. So for my class, I had to curate a pathfinder on any topic of my choosing and choose a specific library from which I was putting it together as if I worked there and put all these 20 resources in a document and create annotations for each one. And the guidelines for the annotations were that um, they needed to be brief, you know, not a paragraph for each source, but like a sentence or two. And I had to approach the whole project with the mindset of who my target audience was. So if I identify my target audience as children, I'd want to write these annotations in a very short and simple way. Whereas if I was having a scholarly or academic audience in mind, I might write with a little bit more uh, complexity of language and use more jargon and academia terms. So, so whatever my topic and audience was, I just had to keep that in mind and justify the decisions I made in creating this Pathfinder. So my library that I chose was a local library, not the one I work at, but a different local library. And my topic was Guide to Comics, an introduction to comics. And my target audience was older teens and adults. We were allowed to use 
online materials, but we had to have at least seven sources that the library actually had in their collection. So I went to the library and I checked out a lot of comic related material. And in putting this together, I thought, I might as well make a video about this too. You know, do a little double dipping on this. If I'm already having all these comic related books out from the library, I might as well sh share them with the internet so that maybe you could benefit from these too. We were also supposed to put the branding of our library that we chose in the Pathfinder, but I don't want to divulge that information to the general internet audience. So I will insert a slightly modified version of my Pathfinder so that you can see how it turned out design-wise. But I'm gonna go through and share these resources with you now. Um, I broke up the Pathfinder into about five different categories and the first category is start here. So this is gonna be the section where very general overview information is shared, you know, really foundational sources that are gonna help the reader who is a total beginner to comics understand the medium better. Um, the second section is comics history, so giving a little bit more context for comics and their cultural impact. The third section is biographies of comic artists, and that's just that, various biographies about well-known and influential artists. The fourth section is creating comics, so if you're interested in making your own comics, these are great resources to consult to do that. And then the last, last section is read comics online, and these are websites uh, from which you can read comics for free online. The one disclaimer I will add is that because I had to heavily draw from this library's in-house collection of comic related resources, the resources that I am sharing with you are not necessarily the best of the best and some of them are, I'll be honest, like 20 years old at this point. So they might be slightly outdated by this point, but they're what I was going with. I will make sure to comment on the resources that I really, really do think are going to be great um, and we'll just go from there. So if you're a beginner to comics or you're looking for more comics resources, keep watching because I'm sure you will find at least one thing from this video to add to your TBR. Start here. The first resource I have on my Pathfinder is a video from Carrie Fransman who gave a TED talk that's called Why We Should Be Taking Comics More Seriously. Um, and basically in this about 10 minute long TED talk that Carrie delivered, I want to say in 2014, um, she basically discusses the power, the unique potential of comics to tell stories, bridge communication gaps, and deliver a story across cultural bounds. And she uses her own experience in creating a graphic memoir in, in collaboration with the British Red Cross to amplify a refugee's story of how he had to flee his country. So this is a really well done TED talk and I think it's just a fantastic introduction to comics. The next source I have is from the Free Comic Book Days website and it's a web page called Forms and Definitions and on this page uh, it kind of breaks down like the difference between comic and graphic novel and trades and like different lingo that you'll see when people are discussing comics and I think this is another great foundational resource like if you're not sure like what all the lingo means this is a great one to consult to um, to just kind of get a better understanding and better grasp on the vocabulary. After that, I have another web page called How Do I Start Reading Comics? The Simple Guide for New Readers. And this is from a site called How to Love Comics. I think that this website in its entirety is a great resource for comics newbies because it offers a lot of foundational information. Um, this web page specifically kind of breaks down misconceptions and addresses like how like what to look for, like what kind of comics you might like if you've never read a comic before. And the website also has a list of terms and vocabulary words that you can check out in addition to the previous resource I mentioned. But I think this is a great website for people getting into comics. Super accessible, very enthusiastic voice, and pretty easy to navigate website. The next resource in this category I have to recommend is Understanding Comics, The Invisible Art by Scott McCloud. If you have not read this book, you have to read this book. 
I first read this in a college class I took back in my undergrad and this completely changed the way I perceived comics. Um, if you're a beginner to comics, I think that if you've never read a comic before, if you've read a few comics before, I think you should read this book because Scott McCloud really illustrates literally the unique capabilities of comics as a storytelling medium and how significant comics have been culturally and historically and a lot of just really foundational knowledge in this comic. Even if you're trying to get into filmography or photography or illustration, not necessarily in a comic way, um, this really does a lot for the visual mediums in art and I just think that you have to read this. It's so good. People who talk about comics talk about this book. Like this is... it was published in 1993 but it's still just so good. And then the next book I have is 1000 Comics You Must Read. And this goes through the different eras in American comics starting in the 1930s and ranks the comics that the author, Tony Isabella, believes that the author, that the reader must read. Um, and he gives a little cheeky preface about how to use this book and like his own accolades that qualify him to provide such advice. But um, he's written for Marvel and DC, so there's that. But um, yeah, it goes through the different decades and ranks the comics published in each decade in order of his subjective preference and recommendation, and it goes all the way up into the new millennium. So this book was published in 2009, so it pretty much goes up until 2000, like the early 2000s. Um, it does include action comics, superhero comics, Manga is in it too, um, Persepolis is in it, so it's even got graphic memoir, um, Monster, I love Monster, it's a great series, um, Cartoons, Archie, so there's a lot of great comic recommendations available in this book. That's it for that category. Now we are moving on to comics history, and I will begin with this very new release which just came out earlier this year called American Comics A History. This is a chunky history book, but I will say that um, a great portion of the back of the book is just resources and notes. So, I mean, it's about 440 pages long. And this attempts to cover 150 years of American Comics history um, I say attempts because there's just so much there, so there's only, you know, the extent to which one can cover all of that is a bit limited, especially in a one book series, but this looks like a great resource. Um, I guess I'll also mention that I haven't, that the only book in this collection of books that I've actually read is Understanding Comics. The rest of them I've merely flipped through and studied, but not actually read, so I can't totally speak to the quality of the books, but in analyzing them on a surface level, they all seem very quality. But um, yeah, this is a new release, Bad Boy, and will give you a great comprehensive overview of American comics. The next book in the history category is Why Comics From Underground to Everywhere. This is authored by Hilary Shute, and in this she discusses comics as they relate to various cultural topics and provides a lot of full color examples and excerpts from comics. So I'll kind of flip through it so you can see. But um, out of all of these books, this is the one that I actually do want to read from cover to cover. Um, actually, there's a few more I do want to read from cover to cover, but this one looks super interesting. Um, Scott McCloud from Understanding Comics also blurbs it on the back of the book. Some of the topics shoot covers includes disaster, superheroes, sex, the suburbs, cities, punk, illness and disability, girls, war, queer, and um, some other stuff. So I think this is, this looks like a really interesting book and uh, a great exploration of comics as they relate to various popular topics. 
The last recommendation I have in this category of history is Seek Your History of Comics. This is a docu-series. Um, the Walking Dead comic book creator Robert Kirkman stars in this documentary and he basically discusses the important people and events that influence comics over time and it includes interviews with people such as Stan Lee, J.K. Simmons, Patty Jenkins, and Todd McFarlane among many others. I haven't watched this but it looks really cool and it's got a lot of big names in it so I think it'd be a great exploration of the history of comics. The next category is biographies of comic artists. The first one I have here was published in 2020 and is called Invisible Men, The Trailblazing Black Artists of Comic Books. And this is essentially a collection of biographies about various black men who were important in comics. And each artist mentioned receives several pages dedicated to um, detailing their life and their work as well as extensive excerpts in full color and full page as you can see of their art and their work. This looks like a really cool book. I would love to read this one too. Um, I think this is a really important collection and I'm happy to recommend it to you. Um, there is another book called Encyclopedia of Black Comics by Sheena Howard, published in 2017. This is a resource that I found through Hoopla, and I believe it's also available physically, but my library only has it on Hoopla as an ebook. And this is another encyclopedia of black artists. Um, it's not necessarily an encyclopedia. They ca she calls it an encyclopedia, but it's more of like a biography. Um, or a collection of biographies, but it features artists and writers of African descent and it organizes them by their last name alphabetically and includes uh, a brief biography about them as well as occasionally a small excerpt of their work. And the last book in this category is one of the oldest. It was published in 2001 and it's called Women Cartoonists. Um, this goes kind of chronologically by era and, and shares women cartoonists um, in American culture. It begins in 1896 and spans up to 2000, including lots of colorful samples of their work and um, and brief biographical information. Uh, the next category is creating comics. This was a really fun category for me to put together. Um, let's see. The first one I'm recommending is from Linda Berry. Uh, if you don't know Linda Berry, she is a very important comic creator. Um, I think she, I think her one work is called is it like a thousand demons or I forget. I read one of her works in that college class I mentioned earlier, but this is a really cool book called Making Comics, and it is literally composed in a composition notebook and includes lots of doodles and multimedia collage type elements. But what this book does is really prompt and challenge the reader to get in touch with their creativity and there's lots of exercises throughout the book to encourage you to try this on your own, to really get those creative gears spinning and tap into your own style and sense of expression, as well as then begin to build your comic. So this is a great preliminary book to creating your own comic, I think, because it sort of, um, it sort of addresses the more foundational aspects of understanding your own creativity and just kind of letting yourself feel playful and imaginative. The next one is from 2010. It's called You Can Do a Graphic Novel. Stan Lee has a blurb at the top of this cover. And this is a guide to making your own graphic novel. And I think I appreciate this book because it is very whimsical. The illustrations on it in it aren't horrible, but they're also not like the most professional illustrations ever which is not like a diss to the creator but sometimes it can be very intimidating and overwhelming if you're reading like a how to create a comic book and the illustrations are all flawless because then you hold your own illustrations to that standard 
However, the author of this has very accessible approach to creating your own graphic novel, um, including lots of quizzes and exercises, um, encouraging the reader to try them, and you know, laying out the foundation of how plot works, how paneling works, um, how to conceptualize your story, uh, the creative process, and all this great advice and tips on creating your own graphic novel. So I think this is a great follow-up instruction set to this one. Next I have The Art of the Graphic Memoir. This is by Tom Hart and in this he discusses graphic memoir. If you know me, if you know my channel, you know I'm obsessed with graphic memoir. I want to read like every graphic memoir out there, but basically graphic memoir is a memoir told in comic format. In this Tom Hart provides a lot of recommendations for graphic memoirs that the reader can also read and check out, um, and he uses a lot of examples from those graphic memoirs to illustrate his points, with references made to works such as Fun Home by Alice Bechdel, Alison Bechdel, um, some that I have not heard of, even Calling Dr. Laura, which I read earlier this year or last year, I can't remember, um, Meta Mouse, but he really kind of guides you on how to collect your own life stories that you want to address and draws on examples from pre-existing graphic memoir and I think this is a really interesting and great book, very niche and I'm glad it exists and there's a wonderful reading list in the beginning of other graphic memoir. Next is Brian Hitch's Ultimate Comic Studio. This is a resource that is a little bit for the more serious in terms of creating a graphic novel. Um, it includes examples on how to lay out comic panels. It's got great advice on composition and technique, different artists tools, and even though it is a little bit more heavily based on action comics, um, I think it has a lot of great comics principles that pretty much anyone could benefit from, at least browsing through. Um, anyone interested in creating their own graphic novel could probably pull at least some advice or tips and tricks from this. So this is another cool resource. Then for those who are a little bit more serious about creating a graphic novel, I have make comics like the pros. The two authors of this detail strategies in collaborating and the collaborative process. They discuss scripting and provide some sample scripts of works. Let me try to find where the page is. Here it is. Some sample scripts of comics that they've made, including the um, different, different steps in the process and sketches and everything like that and how it comes together, as well as the marketing end of it. Once the comic has been completed, it gives advice on how to market the comic and get it sold with very lengthy sample at the end of how it turned out from their whole process. But yeah, this seems like another great resource um, for the most serious in this category. And the last category, finally, read comics online. The first recommendation I have is Go Comics at gocomics.com. This website has comic strips, political cartoons, and web comics available for you to read for free. You can read some of them for free without registering, but to access more of them, you will need to create a free account. However, it's free. Like I said, you don't have to enter your credit card information and you can read them endlessly. However, if you do pay extra, you can get ad free viewing and have the ability to like share them and comment on them. But um, this is a great resource and it has a lot of well-known titles on it like Calvin and Hobbes. The next resource I have is Hoopla and Hoopla actually has a new to comics collection. So I don't know if the link will work. Um, I can link you to Hoopla, but I basically just searched Hoopla. I entered my library card information and just search comics and it took me to the new to comics collection and it has variety of titles such as the Tea Dragon Society volume one, um, various superhero comics, you know, all the first volumes and it's just a great resource to peruse through to find one that maybe speaks to you and your preferences. Uh, the next one I have is Comixology. 
This one is free with an asterisk. If you have Amazon Prime, you have free access to Comixology. If not, you will have to create an Amazon Prime account, but it comes free with that. If you're a student, you can get the first six months free of Amazon Prime and then get it for a reduced rate after that. But um, yeah, Comixology has a ton of free comics on it that you can read uh, through Kindle and that's another resource for you. And the last one is called Digital Comics Museum and this is a website that has lots of public domain comics from the golden age of comics which was in the 1930s and 40s. Nothing new or modern at all on this site but if you are interested in exploring like the backlist of comics this is a great resource because it's free and yeah so those are all the resources that I put together for this Pathfinder project. That's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you've maybe plucked at least one resource from this that you're interested in reading. Scott McCloud also has Reinventing Comics, um, which was published I think in 2000 called How Imagination and Technology Are Revolutionizing an Art Form. I did not include this in my Pathfinder, but this is another resource you could check out um, in addition to understanding comics. might be pretty interesting to you. I uh, hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching. Bye! See ya.